How's it going guys? In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how we can create this login screen in SwiftUI and we're going to be using MVVM for this. So it's going to be quite clean and it's going to work like this. We're going to have a username field, a password field, a forgot password button and a logon button. If we type in something wrong, such as that and a random password, it's not going to let us log on. We're going to have to go ahead and change the data to something such as username. And for the password, of course, I pick my most trusty password, which is password. And if we click on log on, we're going to get this very beautiful animation that just swipes the screen down into our home view. And also if we exit the application and return to the application, we're still going to be logged in and it's going to say, welcome back username. So whatever the user's name is, it's going to be in there. And if we want to log out, we click on log out and the screen's going to beautifully animate back to the top with the username in place, but not the password. So that's what we're going to be creating in today's tutorial. Now, the very first thing we want to do is create a new empty project in Xcode. Then click on your main project folder and hold Command plus N so we can create a new Swift file. And we're going to name this one Content View Model. Now inside the content view model, we need to go ahead and import Swift UI. And inside we can create an extension on the content view because we only want content view to access this view model. And inside here, we're going to create a class called view model, which conforms to the observable object protocol. And we can close the sidebar for now since we have some work to do in here. But to keep things very simple in this tutorial, we're not going to be using user defaults or actually we will be using it, but we're going to be using it through app storage, which allows us to do it very easily just by providing a key here. So authentication key is going to be the key for this one. And we're going to say var authenticated, which is going to be set initially to false. So anytime this value changes, it's going to be stored in user defaults just because we specified the key and the at app storage keyword. But of course, since we're doing it like this, we also need to go ahead and call will set because we need to tell the program that the object will change and we need to send that notification. And usually we would do it by typing at published. But in this case, we're just going to use object will send instead. Next, we need to go ahead and type in app storage and we also want to create a user key. So here we type in user key var username is going to equal nothing initially. And this is only because when we want the user to log out, we still want it to remember their username, but not their password. So by giving the program this key, it's going to remember the username upon logout. Then we have two published variables and the first one is a password which is set to nothing initially and a published var of invalid, which is set to a Boolean and it's going to be false. Now let's also go ahead and create a sample user. So private var sample user is going to equal username and private var sample password is going to equal password. And I really recommend you fill these out in debugging, such as username for the username and password for the password. So that's when we log into the program, both of these fields are going to be filled out and you can easily simulate the login process. You don't want to have to type this out every single time you're logging in, but you do want to be able to compare it to this to see if everything's working correctly. So make sure you keep these for debugging and make sure you remove them for your actual application. Now we can go ahead and create an initializer and this initializer will just add some debug data such as print currently logged on and we want to know if we are currently logged on. Now we can go ahead and print current user is going to be username. So that's the basic data model. Now we just need to go ahead and create some functions that we can insert into our login screen. And the first one we want to do is create one that's called toggle authentication. So function toggle authentication. And inside here, first we want to make sure that the password gets reset to nothing because we don't want to store that in any place in our program for longer than necessary. And then with an animation, we're going to go ahead and insert authenticated dot toggle. 
So this is going to make sure that authenticated turns into true and then that authenticated can turn into false. So we can handle that both in the login screen and in the logout screen. Then we need to go ahead and type in function authenticate for the actual authentication because the logout is just going to use this by itself. So authenticate and first we need to guard that self.username.lowercase is equal to the sample user. Else, we're going to go ahead and type in self.invalid is going to equal true. And invalid is going to be linked to the alert. So if it becomes true at any moment, it's going to pop up and it's going to return out of this function. So nothing happens. And the same thing is going to happen for the password. So go ahead and copy and paste that right below. Except here, go ahead and type in password and password. And it's going to do the exact same thing. Or actually, here should be sample password. And we're using lowercase because we want to make sure that our program is case insensitive. Then at the bottom, we just need to toggle the authentication because if both of these pass, it means it is a correct user and that we can actually log in. And right below, we can type in function log out, which is just going to toggle the authentication. So if it's true and you're logged in, it's going to do the opposite and it's going to log out. And finally, we're going to have a function called log pressed for all the buttons that don't do anything, but we just want them to have some sort of action. We're going to type in print button pressed. And this is going to take care of the view model. So we have something that can toggle the authentication, something that can check whether the username and password is correct, a way of logging out, and just an extra function for random buttons, plus all of the information for our login screen. Now it's time to go to our content view. And inside here, the very first thing we have to do is instantiate our view model. So at state object var vm is going to equal the view model. Now the very first thing we have to do is go ahead and type in if vm is authenticated, then we're going to return this view over here, which is going to be the logged in view. So in case the user is authenticated, we have a logged in view inside here. Else, we're going to show the login screen and it's going to start as a Z stack so that we can stack views on it and create our layout. But let's go ahead and start with the first one. So just for testing purposes, to work on the first one, you have to add an exclamation mark, which checks for the opposite. And just like that, we can go ahead and type in text. Welcome back. And I'm going to use markdown for this. vm.username dot lowercase exclamation mark. So as you can see, using these asterisks, it makes the username bold and we don't have to call dot bold all the time. So it just makes it look a bit cleaner. And then we'll go ahead and type in text. Today is backslash date dot formatted with the date and time. And I want to go ahead and add some spacing inside this VStack. So spacing will be set to 20. And finally, we're going to add a button that logs us out. So button log out and the action is going to be set to vm dot log out. So that's incredibly clean with the tint of dot red and the button style of dot bordered. So it's easy to spot. And if the user wants to log out at any moment, they tap on it. It toggles the logout action and the user gets taken away from this screen. So this is the logged in screen, of course. But now that we have finished doing that, we can remove this exclamation mark and it's going to tell us to work on the else screen because we are not authenticated by default, which means we'll be sent to the else block immediately. Now, this whole view is going to have a transition effect and the transition is going to offset the view by 850 pixels. So the X is going to be set to zero while the Y is going to be set to 850. And we're just getting rid of this immediately because as we add info inside here, this is going to go so far down and I just want to make sure this is out of the way. Now, the very first thing I want to do is add a background image. So let's go ahead and open our assets folder. And I've already gone ahead and downloaded one. And you can also download the same one if you want. It's inside my GitHub repository. Just go to login screen two assets.xassets and click on the sky image set. Here you're going to get a sky JPEG and you just click on download and it will take you to this screen so you can have the exact same image as I do. 
but I already have that on my desktop. So all I have to do is drag this into my assets catalog and it's going to be there. But now back in the content view, we're going to close this sidebar and add an image that says sky. And it's going to be resizable and it's going to have a corner radius of 20 and it's going to ignore the safe area. So now you can see that it covers the entire screen and it ignores the safe area. So we have a nice background for our login screen and Pick any image you like. This is just for the example purpose of creating this screen. So it doesn't have to be this one, of course, but we're just going to use that for here. Under the image, we need to go ahead and create a V stack. And we're going to have an alignment of dot leading and a spacing of 20. And the content is going to be removed because we're going to open up a closure. So the very first thing we're going to have are two spaces one at the top and one at the bottom. And we need to add a text that says log in. And this is the title. So here we can type in foreground color dot white with a font of dot system, size, weight, and design. And the size is going to be set to 40, the weight to medium, and the design is going to be set to rounded. So we get this very large login screen. Then we want to create a text field with username and the text is going to be bound to our view model dot username with a text field style of dot rounded border and a text input auto capitalization, which was really hard for me to pronounce, which will be set to dot never. Then for the password, we can create a secure field. And inside here, we'll just type in password with the text, which is connected to the VM dot password and it's going to have a text field style of rounded border, the same text input auto capitalization set to dot never, and it's going to be privacy sensitive. So the app knows to mark it as privacy sensitive, and this is very important for screen readers and so on. We don't want it just blurting out that your password is blah, blah, blah. We want to make sure it knows that this is privacy sensitive information. Then below the secure field, we can create an H stack with a spacer and a spacer. So another sandwich of spaces. And it's going to have a button that says forgot password question mark. And the action is going to be VM dot log pressed because we don't have any sort of action for remembering a password. But we are going to give it a tint of dot red dot opacity of 0.8. Then we need a spacer and a button for logging in. So button log in, and it's going to have an action of vm.authenticate with a button style of dot bordered. So, so far it's starting to look more and more like a login screen. And we have already all of this bottom part. So now we just have to create the alert in case the user insert some wrong credentials. We don't want them logging in for no reason. And we also want them to know that they did attempt to do it, but it wasn't right. So right below the space over here, we can type in dot alert, and we're going to type in access denied, and is presented will be set to the VM dot invalid. And the actions, we have to actually define them now by creating this closure. And it's just going to be a button that says dismiss with the custom action of vm.log pressed. And as you can see in our preview, it looks like it's touching the edges because it is. And that's because we need to give it still a frame, which I will set to a width of 300, while the rest we can just delete. Not like that, but like that. And we will also give that a padding. Now with all of that being done, we can go ahead and run the application so go ahead and hold command plus R and let's see what happens. So as you can see, we have the username and the password filled out. So we can just tap on log on and we're going to experiment with the transitions. And that's actually why I left it there. I really wanted to experiment with all the transitions. When we log out, it goes back out and the password field is missing. Now, if we try to log on, it's going to say access denied because there's no password there. But we can go ahead and type in password again and it will log us on to our logon screen. And I also wanted to mention that you can change the transition to whatever you want. You can even do something such as scale. 
And this time when you run the application, you're going to notice a really cool new effect. So let's go ahead and log on. You're going to notice that we scaled inwards. And also when we log out, we're going to scale outwards. So this transition over here can provide you with so many log on effects. And that's why we have the placeholder text. It's so we can practice these kinds of elements such as transitions. But as soon as you know that you're done with the app, go ahead and go to your content view model and remove the username and the password from over here so that when you restart the application, they're going to be completely empty and that the user can have a true user experience. So username and password and login. And there we go. We are logged in. It says, welcome back username, which is our username. And it says today is this date over here. And your only option is to log out. Also, I forgot to demonstrate that if we go out of this app and re enter the app, we're still going to be in the logged in view. So everything's working correctly. We have an app that we can use authentication with. And yeah, that's actually all I wanted to show you guys in today's lesson. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.